Hey YouTube, thanks for coming back. Oh man, guys, I'm sorry. We've been working full time and then still trying to get this homestead going. Man, it is so hard to bring you guys content and film it and edit it and do all this while we're working full time as well as doing this. But the struggle is real and I'm glad that you guys are with us on this journey. And uh, let me show you. <laughs> show you what's going on. For those of you that are new to the channel and are looking to do homesteading, um, getting off grid and all that good stuff, well, let me show you. Let's get to it. Welcome to Hidden Valley Homestead, where my wife Olivia and I escaped the city to homestead our off-grid property in Idaho. This is our journey. All right, guys, so I know I'm preaching to the choir with most of you guys because most of all of you guys are doing the same thing. Um, but those of you guys that are looking to do this, um, let me just spin you around and introduce you to the homestead here. Off-grid cabin, maintaining our own, our own solar system, batteries, all that good stuff. Wood heat is our only source of heat, so I have a giant pile of logs behind there that I'll show you guys a little later on that uh, we're going to be using for firewood. That's our only source. So I got to get to chopping. Um, there's the old girl. Guys, I promised you I was going to give you some content. She's still sitting up there. I promise. But we've got priorities. Here we go. Here's our garden from last year. And uh, we've got blueberry bushes that are starting to come in. And we have two little raised beds. Let me show you Libby's garlic. Her garlic took off like crazy. Loving it. So we're going to have some fresh garlic this year. Strawberries are growing like crazy. Got some tomato plants going. All the blueberries are just starting to sprout. Fence, super important in deer country. Otherwise, they will eat your garden alive. So, this is going to be the new garden. 90 by 60. It's going to come up right here. We're going to put it in the fence line right here. And uh, it's going to encompass all this. this. All this will come out. Well, the fence post will come out. Let me show you the fence post, guys. We have a friend that logged their property and uh, all of this stuff was too small to take to the mill to make any money off of and he was super, super kind. These were all pulled out of his slash pile. These were gonna be burned up. Holy smokes, guys, they're 12 to 14 feet long. Six to eight inches in diameter. And as you can see, I've already started peeling one. So you guys remember our, our uh, woodshed build from last year? Why go buy these things? Pressure treated poles, 10 footers right now at the store are 35 bucks a piece. So I need 30 of these bad boys. That would have been a thousand dollars worth of poles. My friend gave them to me. Oh my goodness, we are so grateful. So we're gonna be peeling all of these and then we're gonna treat them like we showed you last time so they don't get, so they last longer in the ground. I'm gonna put them in cement. We're gonna drill holes and we're gonna uh, put cement in here because this ground gets a little bit mushy. So there we go. That's the plan, guys. We're gonna do some peeling and treating and uh, we're gonna auger all these holes and then we're gonna put all these poles in. And I'm getting six foot fencing. I'm gonna leave the poles at eight to 10 feet high so that we can put either boards on the top or we can put wire. I'd like to put boards, but that's gonna be quite a few boards to put up there. Uh, that way the deer won't jump over it. Uh, that's, that is usually the plan for success up here in deer country to keep your garden safe. And put all that time and effort into a garden and then have the deer come and just mow it all down, it's, it's horrible. So here we go, let's get to work. Guys, this draw knife is really awesome. It is a solid American made steel and uh, it works really, really good. I'll leave you guys a link in the description for this thing, but it works fantastic for taking the bark off. All right, two down, 28 to go. <laughs> All right guys, so we only have one of these draw knives and I need another a knife so we can both peel this bark off as quickly as possible. I was looking for one of those like three inch wide chisels and I, I didn't really find one. I didn't I didn't look on Amazon or anything and, I, and this kind of came up all of a sudden and we need to get this done. So I'm gonna modify a garden tool that I have. I'm gonna modify this tool right here. I'm gonna cut off these, 
the forks on the side and then the, the flat blade I'm going to cut off and I'm going to weld it so it's in line with the handle. All right guys, I cut off the tines and I put that flat blade on the side, a little bit of an edge to it. You want the beveled side facing down so that you can angle it and slide that along the log. Nice sharp edge on it. But yeah, check that out guys. Let's see how this works. Yeah, look at this. So you have this beveled edge right here. That's what slides on the log and you can angle it a little more to get a little more bite. But look at that. When I helped my dad build that log house, we had a, I had a long chisel like this with a wide blade like this on it and it worked fabulous. You want to keep a nice sharp edge on it, you can cut through the branches. We've got all 34 of those poles peeled 40 inches up because we're going to bury those 33 feet in the ground, leave about six inches of, of exposed wood. And my homemade little peeler, spud peeler, uh, worked pretty darn good. So we got all these done. So now the next step is to, we're going to burn these suckers with the, with the weed burner, blacken those bad boys. And then we've got some used motor oil that we're going to use to seal them up after we burn them. So... We have got almost all of them burned now, so I've got a couple more to finish up over here. The next step in the process is we're going to coat these with some used motor oil. Alright guys, here's the auger. It is three feet from that tip to the top of the corkscrew there. So we're going to go three feet all the way down. I'm going to go a little bit deeper because we're going to put a rock in there. So we're gonna, when I do these, it's going to go all the way up to right about here because there's going to be a little bit of dirt that falls in. So, all right, here we go. Oh my gosh. How long did that take us? Maybe 30. Ha half an hour? Minutes, yep. Three minutes a hole? Would you rather have done that uh, by hand with the post hole digger, three feet deep? How long did it take us to dig the post hole, uh, the nine, the nine post oh holes gosh. for our woodshed? It all was day. like like half a day, yeah. wasn't it? It was yeah. crazy, we were so wow. exhausted. Thank you, Ryan from North Idaho Chronicles. That was fantastic. That saved us an immense amount of backbreaking work. So, yep. we're going to put a rock in the bottom of each hole 
and that'll help for drainage. And the pole will sit on top of that rock and have a little bit of drainage underneath there. And then we're going to come back and put some cement around there. We don't want, uh, we want a little bit of an airspace or somehow we don't want to keep that water sitting against the bottom of the pole. Now, this one kind of looks like it's at an angle. All right, I made a critical error, guys. So when I was using that auger, I went down three feet and I should have gone as far as I can go with that thing and then carefully pulled it out. And what happened is a bunch of the dirt fell back in, almost a foot. So some of these holes are only two feet deep. They really need to be three feet deep, not just for frost heave, but for stability. So we had to take a couple of poles out. We had to take six poles out and take the rocks back out. And I'm gonna run back over this with the auger again. All right, guys, here's a little tip for you guys for when you're using an auger and the mis I hope you guys avoid the mistake that we made. Let's go take a look at that tip really quick. All right, so you guys can see the tip of this auger bit from there up the corkscrew to the end of the corkscrew right here is exactly three feet. However, in your hole, this is going to be pretty much all dirt. So you're going to lose a solid six inches or so of dirt because you're not catching the dirt and scooping it out until you get all the way up here. This is going to be your boring, uh, your boring tip, but this part right here is the part where it scoops it out. So if you're trying to make a three foot hole, you need to start your hole here and discount this eight inches of tip. So even though it says 36 inches, I needed to count and go another eight inches and I actually went, um, well, you guys saw my holes right there. I was, I, I actually had to take it back down all the way to this spot right here to get my full three feet of, of, of hole. So pay attention to the length of your corkscrew, guys, and don't count on your bit giving you that extra uh, length, uh, depth of hole. So up here in Idaho, they say uh, all of your water lines have to be at a four foot uh, depth uh, to get past the frost level other parts of the country or you know colder climates you got to go even deeper with your water lines so you have the freeze thaw uh in the springtime when things freeze it rarely gets below two feet here but if my poles were only two feet in the ground there's a very good chance that when the freeze thaw started happening it would have heaved those poles right out of the ground if i didn't go a little bit further past the two foot mark so that's why i wanted to go three foot with these poles i don't want them coming out i don't want to redo these in a year all right, my lovely assistant, we redid them. Thankfully, we have that machine right there, and that made it a lot quicker to redo those holes an extra foot. I didn't take into account that 8-inch tip, the boring tip. That, that doesn't yeah. scoop any dirt out. The corkscrew is 8 inches up. So. All right, let's get these in. All right, so are we going to drop all these in now? Yeah. Really? Yeah. 6.30? Yep, come on. Okay. Man, she's a whip cracker, slave driver. I was gonna use a skid steer, but. That was a lot quicker and easier. Well, I wanna say easier, but quicker. All right, guys, poles are in. Now I gotta go get 60 bags. I'm gonna do two, two 60 pound bags of cement in each one. And then we'll cover the rest in with dirt. And these things should last a long time. They're going to be solid and it'll withstand deer and elk. And uh, hopefully it'll withstand a moose. So next stop, Lowe's.